welcome everybody to um, this month's uh, uh, seminar series of the Global Alliance of Confucius Institutes of Chinese Medicine. Um, as you may know, we have um, Confucius Institutes uh, of Chinese Medicine across all five continents, and we've established um, a global alliance. Uh, uh, and part of that is uh, this seminar series. Um, I'm very happy to welcome and thank Professor Zhang Bing Zhang um, to present, uh, or, or he's our first speaker today uh, from the RMIT Confucius Institute for Tradition, Tradition Chinese Medicine. So Professor Zhang uh, is vice president of the second affiliated hospital of Nanjing University of Chinese Medicine and principal of Chenjiang Acupuncture School. He's a professor of traditional Chinese medicine and successively worked in Shangda Hospital affiliated to Southeast University and the second clinical medical college of Nanjing University of Chinese Medicine. At present, he is a vice president, professor, chief tra traditional Chinese medicine physician and doctoral advisor of the second affiliated hospital of Nanjing University of Chinese Medicine. He's mainly engaged in the research of uh, Chinese medicine acupuncture and moxibustion theory and its clinical transformation. He has a systematic research um, program on meridian theory, edited and published academic monographs such as clinical guidelines of 12 meridians and meridian fission in thousand years, a chronological study of theoretical evolution and clinical application. He treats depression um, and uh, GI disorders such as uh, functional constipation with acupuncture and moxibustion in clinical practice. And uh, we look forward to um, hearing his presentation today uh, on acupuncture for functional constipation. And um, we thank him for participating. Um, we'll record the session and it'll be available to members of our Global Alliance um, on our YouTube channel. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Professor Zhang, and I'll hand over to you now. Okay, thank you, Kim, Pro uh, Professor Kim. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Good afternoon from Nanjing, China. Today we talk about uh, acupuncture for functional constipation. We now function Functional constipation is defined as persistent symptoms of difficult, infrequent, or seemingly incomplete defecation, which has no other apparent etiology. We know this is one of the common clinical functional gastrointestinal diseases. It mainly includes dry stool, difficulty in defecation, or the feeling of endless defecation. Symptoms of constipation lasting more than six months can be considered as colonic functional constipation. According to the epidemiological survey, <coughs> The prevalence of colonic functional constipation was 16% in the world, world. In the different area, the prevalence is different. Obviously, the occurrence of this disease is closely related to the lifestyle eating habits, more mental strength, and so on. Functional constipation is a very common disease in the children and the adult, for which the solution, solution of symptoms with the current available therapies is difficult to achieve. Acupuncture is an important part of Chinese medicine, which has a long history 
in the treatment of constipation. In ancient China, doctors have accumulated a wealth experience and a theory. Today, Chinese medicine had made a new development, especially since 2007, reports based on RCT studies was published. The clinical effect of functional constipation treated by acupuncture is more and more complete. Its action mechanism is also more and more clearly. So today, we exchanges were well divided into three parts. The first is perspective of functional constipation from TCM. The second is clinical method and effection of acupuncture in treating functional constipation. Last, there are some questions to discuss. How to understand from TCM? <clears throat> First is the definition. Like other diseases, constipation is understood from clinical symptoms in TCM and some related items and the names will be recorded in the ancient book. For example, difficult defection in Su Wen, cold calculation, solid heat in San Han Run, or a symptom with fluid defection and stool knocking. Like in Jing Gui Yao Lue and the move balls impossibility in the so in TCM, we understood the, we understand the, the cons, uh, functional constipation from two parts. One is the dry store. The second is difficult in passing store. In clinical, constipation will be diagnosed from one or more of the following symptoms. One is the difficult defection, defecting. The second is decreased defection. The third is hard faces. The fourth is defecating feeling. Besides to define in TCM, we also understand the disease from the symptom differentiation. First, uh, firstly, uh, in addition to symptoms, TCM also to distinguish the, the functional constipation between the Deficiency or excesses, cold or heat. In particular, excess types of constipation include uh, is four types: heat constipation, or cold constipation, or chi stagnation constipation, or blood stenosis constipation. In particular. Deficiency types of constipation also include qi deficiency, blood deficiency, yin deficiency, or the yang deficiency. This distinction is necessary for the application of TCM. Secondly, we also to understand this disease from the zhang fu organs. 
in TCM recognize disease based on the theory of five zhang and six fu. Normally, uh, normal function of defecting, defecating need to rely on the <coughs> liver regulating the qi flow, spring transporting the food and the fluid, lungs mm -hmm. functions mm -hmm. to disappear and mm -hmm. descend, kidney warming and nourish. Descend. Yes. And the uh, constipation may also be following the organs function abnormally, like the loss of the body fluid caused by the stomach heat, loss of the intestine dampness, liver cheese stagnation, spring lunch deficiency, weak transmission. Can I ask on mute, please? Not speaking. Kidney in deficiency, intestine dystrophy, kidney young deficiency, in cold stagnation. Uh, one of the earliest textbook of TCM, Huangdi Nuijing recorded some theory about uh, the constipation. First one is for the large intestine. Large intestine is regarded as the organs of transmission. Some changes can be come out. The second is uh, anus. The anus is not only for the anus, also for the five organs. The large intestine and the, the anus mentioned here are concerned with the formula <clears throat> formation of stool and the discharge of the stool, respectively. TCM believes that the whole digestive tract can be divided into seven gates and six parts, among which the large intestine is the last part and the anus is the last gate. This part and this gate are related to the movement of the intestine and the Relate to the constipation directly. The other organs are in the function of the other organs are indirect. Uh, recently, the loma collateral also collides the, the function constipation into two categories. The first is the Chronic transit constipation. The second is the outlet obstruction constipation. It can be found that the East and the West medicine have the same basic understanding for the constipation. Second, we discussed the clinical method and affection of acupuncture in treating the functional constipation. This is an article published in the Annals of International Medicine in uh, 2160. Uh, <coughs> This is the first report of acupuncture treatment of chronic functional constipation based on the TCM study. I organized one of the center.
Okay, let me uh, focus on this study. The treatment group, the observation group, in this treatment group, the main acupuncture was located in the Tianshu, Fuji on the abdomen and Shang Ju Xu on the leg, low limbus. And the electro uh, acupuncture will be used. The control group, same electric acupuncture group. The point, the point will be located in the uh, away from the above points. Needling alone, but no electric stimulation. The two groups had the same frequency and the duration of treatment. Each treating was kept for 30 minutes, five times a week in the first two weeks, three times a week in second six weeks, eight weeks in law and uh, no, eight, eight, uh, 28 times in total. The result, according to the CS BMS is in uh, mean weekly complete spent tennis ball movement from the baseline to the uh, in the observer observation group is limped 1.76 times every week and the <coughs> country group just uh, live live to 0 0.87 times a week the changes based on uh, from the baseline in mainly during the week nine to week uh, 20. In the observation, we are kept uh, 1.96 times a week. And uh, the country group just uh, 0 0.89 times a week. The proportion of the patient have, having three or more mean weekly CSMBS in the acupuncture group was 31.3% uh, and 37.7% uh, over the treatment and the follow period, respectively. The acupuncture related adverse event during the treatment was infrequent in both groups and all were mild or transit. In clinical, we treated the functional constipation always use this method and adjust the intestine and open the anus. According to the TCM theory, we recommend acupuncture to treat the functional constipation from perspective of regulating the conduction of large intestine 
and uh, opening and closing the anus. The point we have selected for large intestine is the Tian Shu and the Shang Chi Xu. To open the anus, Ba Liao and the Chen San will be selected. Okay, let's look at the location of the point. Tian Shu in the abdomen. On the foot yang being merely a stomach meridian, specific location in the away, to turn away from the navel. Shang Ju Xu is located on the, the lateral, lateral side of the human calf. Six chun under the two B and the three chun under the two sandy. Also under the foot yami stomach meridian. Baliao to open the anus, Baliao and the Chen San will be used usually. Under the sacrum, respectively, located in the, the posterior circular hole. A total of eight open, eight, eight points, collectively call it Ba Liao. Ba means eight, Liao means the hole. Another point is Chen San. Point is located between here, be, between uh, the Wei Zhong and the Kunlun on the apex of the gastro near near mus. This muscle, uh, this muscle. This point also under the foot taya meridian. This point uh, yeah, uh, always be used in my clinical. Last, I feel some questions to discuss. Uh, I think uh, there are some wisdoms in diagnosis and treatment of a uh, functional constipation in TCM. The first is the part and the whole. Ligular defecation is an important active in our daily life. TCM believes that Constipation is not, not only a local problems of large intestine and anus, but also maybe the whole this digestive tract and the whole body in the qi and the blood. Therefore, the diagnosis of treatment functional constipation should focus on the both local and system. The second is intestinal and unintestinal. The process of the stone formation is unconscious. When the anna kind of process achieves a certain threshold, stool conscience will be accused and the process of the excreting still is conscious. In order to prevent it and the, uh, treat the functional constipation, it's necessary to consciously develop the habit of the regular defection.
the last is the rhythm of large intestine. The movement of gastrointestinal tract also has a certain rhythm. Gastrointestinal gastro rhythm also not uh, although not as the appreciated as the heart rate, but also very important in clinical practice, especially in the prevent and uh, treatment of functional constipation. So I think the uh, The, the knowledge about the const functional constipation of TCM uh, should be uh, researched more deeply. Last, give a brief summary. Yeah. Different clinical speci <coughs> specialists have different perspective on functional constipation. In the TCM clinical, multi dimension perspective, acupuncture and moxibustion are also be to diagnosis and treatment constipation from the bowel conduction and abdomen, abnormal defection. Last, to recognize constipation we should combine the assessment of the symptoms etiology and the, the disease location. Okay, thank, thank you for attention. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Sean. Um, that was a, a really um, interesting um, uh, presentation on a very important topic. So I, I know in in the country I practice in functional gastrointestinal disorders are very, uh, very common. And uh, so they would include functional constipation, but also irritable bowel syndrome, as we call it, where there's abdominal pain and constipation. Um, so I think that that study you reported from the Annals of Internal Medicine that you published in the Annals of Internal Medicine is, is very important. Um, I noticed that the treatment period was for, I think it was 28 separate treatments, and then the treatment ended. Uh, do you think it would be needed to repeat that treatment uh, over time? Or is it, do you think the one treatment over, as you described, would be enough? Uh, uh, I think... Uh, uh... In, in clinical, uh, some patient uh, just uh, uh, treated by acupuncture only, but some severe disease, we needed to add the, um, relax the, the mental, mental uh, strength, uh, have a regular habit, a regular food, and uh, have a good habit of uh, life. Yeah. Um, so I, I think I agree with that. That that it, it, it's probably multifaceted. You 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 do diet and exercise, and but the acupuncture uh, appeared to have an additional benefit over and above because you compared it to a to a placebo group. Um. Uh, does anybody else uh, have any other questions for Professor Shang? Um, yeah, yeah. Yes, and Bing? Yeah, and uh, okay. yes, it, it's great. And, uh, um, you know, uh, what you had done is you showed the two group and uh, of patients, one under observation and another one and with acupuncture treatment. Each group and has more than 500 patients for a long period of time. 
And uh, this is very much like, and if we want to get, you know, uh, the Chinese medicine and the slow research onto the West and, and the uh, recognized system, so it's very much needed. And my question is uh, for the observation group and uh, how, how can you, uh, how did you, and the, um, you know, and the, uh, conducted that and the research for the observation group is that because it's just too busy and those patients are under observation or those patients, they are voluntarily to be on the observation group or taking any other treatment? Uh, yeah. Uh, this, uh, this project uh, uh, is supported by the government and uh, uh, we do uh, this uh, research just only the acupuncture. Uh, no drug, uh, no other medicine, uh, but uh, we can uh, tell the patient uh, to uh, keep a regular, uh, regular food. Okay. And more, more uh, water, mm -hmm. uh, and relax the 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 the, the, the strength. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I don't see any other uh, questions at the um, moment. Can Sorry. I? Can I? Yeah. Ask me. A question. Yeah, I know constipation is very common in elderly people, and they are beset by this heart situation. Situation, and I want to know are the treatment for the patients of elderly people uh, the same as that for the young patients for constipation? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, the young people, uh, they are very different uh, at all age of the young, between the young and the adult. Uh, young people were more, uh, there are more types of access of, to the young people, to the young patient, to the adult, especially the aged patient, kidney deficiency included the yin and the yang are often appears. So, so uh, according to the TCM, we treated this patient with the different idea and with the different method, especially at the acupuncture we with the, the stimulation. Some is the lift, some are the heavy. Uh, some is light, some is heavy. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. Okay, um, we might move on to the next speaker then, but but I, I really like to thank Professor Zhang for um, presenting uh, what is a very, as, as Guang Ming said, it's very common in our elderly population. Um, but functional gastrointestinal disorders are very common in practice and certainly a major issue for our elderly patients. And um, I'd certainly be interested in giving some thought as to how we, in our country, uh, increase the opportunities for patients to avail of these, um, of these treatments. So thank you very much. And um, maybe if I can ask you just to unshare um, so that we can uh, move on with um, Dr. Uh, Joan Hu, um, who uh, graduated as an MD from Guangzhou University of Traditional Chinese Medicine. Um, so from this year, he's been teaching the basic theories of Chinese medicine and acupuncture courses, including Tuina and Qigong at Hunan University of, of Traditional Chinese Medicine. Since 2015, Dr. Hugh has visited to uh, Medicine uh, in Luxembourg, um, 
and also the Indian Acupuncture Association and the Southeast Asia Thai Chinese Medicine Institute in Bangkok um, and in South Korea. Um, so we're, we're uh, very interested to see that global um, engagement uh, from Dr. Hu as our global alliance of Confucius Institutes of Chinese Medicine have um, uh, Confucius Institutes focusing on Chinese medicine in many of those countries, including Thailand um, uh, and South Korea. Um, so uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Hu Jian, um, who's going to present today um, on Know Your Acupoints. And as mentioned, uh, he's from the Hunan um, uh, tra Tradition Chinese Medicine University. So thank you very much, um, Dr. Hu. Thank you, Dr. O'Brien. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, could you hear me? Yeah, okay. <laughs> because my Wi-Fi signal is not so stable today, then maybe if my uh, screen is frozen, please let me know, okay? <laughs> well, thank so, you. Uh, thank you. It is really be a great honor to be invited to this seminar and share my experience of learning traditional Chinese medicine to you. Then uh, at the beginning, since this is the first time we met, then I need to give you a brief introduction about myself. My name actually is Yu Jun. This is quite an annoying name, I must confess, because, you know, this name, <laughs> actually it needs to pronounce it as Jun when you use it in a person's name. It means intelligent, uh, means very clever. However, uh, during the time we were joined the examination, no matter whether you are in the elementary school or you need to join the HSK, uh, this type of examination, they, there must be a phrase called yong. It means something is meaningful. And only this phrase during the test. So the annoying part is that during the past time, when I uh, introduce myself and then need, uh, I need to uh, have my ID card or the passport, the input software cannot identify this dream pronunciation. So I only could choose the Zhen pronunciation here. Then it is not my choice, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> the reason why I need to share you this character story to you is that all of the things we need to sh uh, I need to share with you is all about the Chinese culture, Chinese characters, and the, you know the. Uh, and the related uh, and the relation between them and the Chinese medicine. So let's get it started. But at the beginning, and for your information, this course, the, all of the uh, graphic sources come from the internet. So if there's anything I did it wrong, please let me know. So the first question today is that I need to ask you, what do you, what is traditional Chinese medicine? Then a lot of people may get this stereotype is that traditional Chinese medicine is this, or they may think that is some medicine come from China. Actually, this is a yes and no answer. So the yes part is that we do use this as our treatment. The no part is that this is not the comprehensive answer. So to know this answer correctly, we need to uh, still know the background information about it. In, during our culture, we call it, uh, and the, in the Chinese, we call it zhong yi. Actually, zhong yi, these two things, these two characters have different uh, explanation as we uh, always have this, got the stereotype to the Chinese medicine. So the first character here, zhong, uh, you know, in the past time, during the, our ancient time, our characters actually is written like drawing a picture. Here is the zhong, it's written like this. So this part actually, it means the flag or flagpole here. So in the, uh, in the primitive society, you know, everyone living this, so this society needs to be equal. They are equal to everything. So this flag type, uh, this flagpole often means the, mm, you know, authority or the, blessing from the God. So these things, uh, actually, we need, if we need uh, a flag or flagpole, then we need to set it in the middle, in the right middle of the tribe. 
to the place we are living, I mean. So that means this zhong actually means no bias, means in the middle of something. And the second character, e here, actually it is the simplified way to read it like this. The original way we could read it like this. So e here, actually we could divide it into three parts. The first part we can see here is we got something, you know, and the brace covered by some, uh, and the, uh, this, this thing. Okay, this thing is means a weapon, is the arrow. Means the arrow is invade somebody's body. This part, the left on the right side, this also means a weapon, it's like this. And the downstairs part here means the echo hole. So you may see from this uh, character that this doctor actually here is more like a surgeon in our days. So what is Zhongyi actually when we put them together, it's more like to telling you this medicine is not only a traditional me uh, medicine comes from China, but also it is a balanced medicine. So when we use this medicine, it's use, uh, we use different kinds of treatment to let your body, you know, from the imbalanced way to be a balanced way. Again, then we could use different kinds of uh, ways to treat the disease, such as the herbs, you know, the massage or the acupuncture and so on. So the second question today is we need to discuss what is acupoint. Acupoint, Actually, in Chinese, we call it xue wei. It is the standard pronunciation, but original, uh, but uh, you know, more commonly, we call it xue wei as well. Xue wei, actually here, xue or xue, here, this character is ori originally written like this. So you can guess this one, it seems like, yes, good guess, I think. <laughs> it's like the cave. Okay, the cave means uh, in this area, it could store something. We could store something in it. So uh, in the body, we often may think this place, we store the qi and blood, which means the energy inside. And the other character here, wei here, means the location. So put them together when we call it xue wei, it means some place, some uh, location on the body, which storage the qi and the blood, which means the energy of the body. And it is from the outside could have the uh, connection through the meridian and to uh, through the meridian to the internal organs. So the xue wei and the meridian connected the body and the in, uh, outside body and the inside organs together. So, then when we use the acupoints to treat disease, we could use like acupuncture in Chinese, we call it zhen si, or we could use massage. In Chinese, we could call it tui na or an mo, and uh, maxpustion, ai jiu. So, but you know, the it is, so different from the Western people, you know, learn Chinese, uh, learn this acupuncture and the, our Chinese people learn acupuncture because, you know, uh, I think in the Western way, they may, well, what we, uh, how we learn it is that we learn the numbers and the meridians together. So for example, like stomach 36, is a famous, uh, uh, you know, acupoint called Zhu San Li, and we know the location of it and the indications of it and the needle methods of it. So this way, I, I must confess it is very effective, but, you know, still we could know some background information about it, especially the cultural information about it. Then I will give you a explanation later. Okay, so today uh, then we will, I will uh, let you know then what's your acupoints and uh, some some you know some uh, special acupoints and then how to use it to solve the recently problem use recent uh, disease or the recent you, you know uh, uncomfortableness we met here.
So recently, I think, you know, during the uh, COVID-19 and, you know, we often may stay at home or sometimes we may cannot get a job, you know, in a normal way, then we become maybe we, we may have some emotion problems, men, mind problems as well. Then the second, we may, you know, use the computer every day or use the cell phone every day, then they may, may have some eyes problem as well. Then thirdly thirdly then we may you know face to some you know uh, seasons change or due to the covid-19 they may got some you know cold problems cold cold easily cold the running nose and the headache problems so so let's come from the uh, come start from the first okay start from this mental this mental or, or the um, mind emotion disease here emotion uncomfortness here. So in this, uh, in Chinese culture, we will call it this one, this uh, type of things, this ki kind of disease, all of them are related to one thing is called shen. Shen could mean, have several meanings in, uh, of this character. First, it could mean the God. And the second, it could mean the spirit of somebody. So to speak, you know, such as a robot, so the shen is more like the progress of the robot here. So, uh, and often in our uh, culture, it's related to the heart, to this organ. So when we need to deal with disease, then we could choose the uh, acupoints from the heart meridian, as well as we could use the name to solve this problem. We could choose something related to shen, these characters. So, so to speak, is HT7, this heart seventh acupoints is called Shen Men Xue. Shen Men, actually, here, Shen, this means the men, mental, as I mentioned before, uh, the mind uh, and the spirit, as I mentioned before. And Men here means the gate or the door. So, when we put these things together, then with Shen Men, it means the gate or the door to control the mind. So when we use these acupoints, it could let you to adjust your function of the mind. So we often use these acupoints uh, in the mind disease, you know, or the anxiety, or uh, for example, the anxiety or insomnia, or you know, in some some problems, we we may uh, not feel very comfortable. In, in our uh, so, some psychological problems here. So the location of this Shen Men Xue is on your inside arm here, okay? It's in the inside arm part. So as you see from the uh, little finger side, and you can see there is a tendon here, tendon here, yes. Uh, I, I have seen already see Dr. Yang, you are correct, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and here uh, we can see the wrist winkle. By the end of the wrist winkle is, uh, you, you can touch the tendon, you know, the tendon is about this tendon, but uh, on the wrist winkle is around, uh, nearly around the ring finger, this side, okay. It's located on the ring finger side of this tendon. Yes, here is called Shen Men Xue. So this acupoint actually here could help you to uh, adjust your mind function here. So if you have anxiety, if you fear, you know, uh, sleepless uh, during the night, then all, all of these situations you could use it. Then um, how to use then how to use this acupoint. So first we could use self-massage way to uh, use it. Then first we need to find some tools to help us. The easiest way to find the tools is use our thumbs, okay? Use the thumbs to press it directly, okay? Like this. And we need to hold the strength for a while. Uh, and press it for like uh, 10 seconds and then take, take your thumbs away. 
but you may find that the stimulation maybe is not strong enough because this uh, acupoint you you may not easily feel the stimulation uh, then we could use some tools to help us first of all we can use the pen okay but the pen of course obviously have two uh, different uh, two sides different sides right one is dull one is sharp so use the dull side, okay? Don't use this one. <laughs> Don't be so harsh to yourself, okay? <laughs> then use the dull side, then use uh, and find the acupoints, then still press it, okay? Press it and hold the strength for a while. Then you may feel like the sore feeling or like, you know, uh, like the numbness feeling. All of these feelings are correct means that you have already stimulated your acupoints here. The second, we could use the cotton stick as well. So everyone, I think you got this in your home. And this one is very convenient to uh, use it as a self-massage way. Then you could find the acupoints and steer by pressing it through this cotton stick, okay? And the third is, I mentioned use your thumb, okay? So find a way which one you like. All of them are okay. You can do this several times a day. Then when you are watching TV, I think when you are, uh, you know, uh, during your uh, walking time, then we staring at the screen with something, uh, or, or, you know, when you are uh, listening to the lecture, uh, all of these times you could use this. Okay, the second acupoint is called Shen Ting Shi. Shen Ting, actually, here, Shen, as I mentioned before, this one, when we talk about this, then this acupoint must have the function that related to the mind. So this one is uh, Ting here, okay? Ting means the garden. So it has another meaning. Mm, you know, in, in Chinese uh, culture, we often say Tian Ting. It means in the higher part of something. When we say Tian Ting, it means the heaven. Uh, so when it comes to the body, then we say Ting. Tian Ting, it means the forehead. Okay, it means the forehead. So when we put them together, it could mean that this play, these acupoints could help you to adjust your mind as well. Let your mind to uh, stay in the garden it used to, to be. And then this thing also tell you that this uh, acupoint is on the upper side of your body. So where is it? It's located on your forehead, okay? Uh, and it's about 0 0.5 twin, directly above the middle point of your uh, front hairline here. So, Chun here is a uh, un major uh, is a major unit. So uh, it's uh, it's about uh, you know it's about zero point five. It's about a half of your thumbs this length, half of it this length. Okay, this long. This is zero point five. Everyone's different. Yeah. So it needs to uh, it needs to find your your own twin here. Okay. But someone may have this question as well. Then the question would be, if I am a board, if I without any hair, then how do I find this Shen Ting Shi? So the easiest way actually here is that you could touch your uh, front, touch your middle, middle, uh, middle line of your front forehead. Then when you touch it and pushing it, Pushing it, then when you pushing it into this area, around this area, you may see that there is a tiny depression, depression on it. So this area actually is Shen Ting Shi here. Okay, so it's on the forehead, and then you know it is not very hard to find here. And then you know this one also have something to do to adjust your mind function here. So we could also use your pen 
and then use the cotton stick and use your thumb to self-massage it. Besides this, and then when we, because you know, this acupoint also, this acupoint also located on the do meridian. So we could also use the comb here. So use the comb, then we could use the comb to press it and pushing it through the middle line here, okay, through it. You can do this several times a day, around uh, five to six time day, uh, uh, times a day. Sorry, then it could have broken my hairstyle. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I will tell you it later, okay. <laughs> All right. So the next part is that when we are facing to the eye problems, especially when we are using a lot of digital products today. So we may face that there are, uh, there are so many different kinds of eye problems. We may feel the eyesight is not good and maybe you know, we may feel sometimes we may feel dry uh, in the eyes, then how could we, could we fix it? Then we could fix, uh, so the first acupoint is the mm, bladder the first. It's called Jing Ming Shi. Jing Ming Shi actually here, Jing means eyeball. Yan Jing, as we said in Chinese, okay. Yan Jing, Yan Jing, it means the eyeball. And the Ming here means light or be lightened up. So put them together, Jing Ming. Jing Ming means to let, let your eyes become light, uh, you know, bright again, brighten your, uh, lighten up your eye. It is very, it is a very famous acupoint to, you know, maintain your eyesight. Here, where is Jing Ming Xue? Jing Ming Xue is on the face, okay. You can actually, uh, around the eye, uh, rim of the eye, it's uh, inside, inside, under the inside of your eyes and then it's under the elbow. You can, uh, you know, imagine your eye as a clock. It's around two o'clock and 10 o'clock, these two points okay, here, around your, the rim of the eye here, okay? As the picture shows to us. So, Jin Ming Xue, how could we do the self-massage on it? So the first to the pen, it is not suitable anymore in this case. Okay, so if you, you know, when you uh, press it, when you press it, sometimes you may cannot control your strength, then they may, you know, may broke your eyeball <laughs> easily. So don't be so harsh to yourself again, okay? So th this is not a very suitable way. Then the next one, use the uh, cotton sticks would be better. And then use your fingers could be better. But the fingers here, we need to uh, pay attention to it. We need to clean our hands first. Otherwise, we need to get other, uh, another infections easily. So uh, in, Chinese, uh, in China, oh, actually majority of the uh, elementary school and the, during the middle school time, we all have one thing in common is that we, all of us will do this high uh, eyesight maintaining exercise every day. And then, you know, the second section of the, second section of it is called Ji An Jing Ming Shi. It's use this acupoint and use your mm, thumb and the index finger together and squeeze it, okay, squeeze it like this, okay squeeze it. So it is very good for maintaining your eyesight here. And the, the another acupoint is called Cheng Qi, Cheng Qi Xue. Actually, this Cheng is originally uh, written like this. The left side and the right side, these two parts stands for the hand, the hands of the hands. And uh, it means, originally, it means to hold something like this. For example, I hold my back like this, okay, to hold something. So in the middle of this part, it stands for the baby and it stands for the sacred thing, the things to sacred things for the God, okay? So no matter what kind of things is, so in the middle of the things is very valuable 
uh, very priceless here. So when we say Cheng, uh, we usually may use these uh, characters by the end of the letter. For example, 我承上我的祝福, I will show you my best wishes. But here, 承上 here, if we say something like this, we may in a very respectful way, okay? In 承上我的祝福 here. So another thing here, 气 here. So it means, <clears throat> so could you guess, I think in English, all of the, when we describe somebody is tearing, then we may have different types of it. We may say it as crying. We may say it as weeping, right? So this chi actually stands for one of them. Is the weeping or the crying? Yes, it's the left side, okay, chi here. But when we say it is crying, somebody sees crying, we may say ta kula. Kula, okay, instead of qi. Qi means tear and weeping, tears and weeping. So ku here, we may say this, this one has two mouth. Okay, the character here has two mouth here and the, the downstairs part here, que means the dogs. Okay, dogs means the dogs is barking very loud. So means very, uh, means in a crying way here. So cheng qi, when we put them together means we hold the, tears for the eyes, then the function of this acupoint could have the function to make your eyes moist, okay, to make your eyes moist, to deal with the dry eyes syndrome here. So the location of this acupoint, actually, it is a little bit harder to find. First, we need to look straight forward, okay, look straight forward first. And uh, you know, below the pupa here, and the, it's between the eyeball and the, the uh, rim of the eye, the downstairs rim of the eye here is in the middle of it. Then we pressing it, when we pressing it, then we need to press it. Uh, we need to make your strength a little bit uh, directed to the rim of the eye side here. I mean, the bone side here. Then, uh, here, actually, how we use the acupoints, of course, use the pen is not correct here. Then we could use the cotton stick. But the cotton stick, when we use it, then we will need to put your strength a little, you know, you know, the direction. We need to put it a little close to the, you know, the rim of the eyesight. So otherwise, then it would uh, directly inside your body, then it, it will cause a very strong and uncomfortable stimulation here. So after several times of this uh, stimu uh, after several times uh, of this uh, stimulation, then you may feel that the uh, your eyes may become watery. You can try it later. Okay, here. So. And uh, besides this, the, when you when it comes to the self massage of this point, then you could actually you could pressing it as well as you kneading it. I mean, you could circling it as well as pressing it here. Okay, like circling here. Okay, like this. Okay, and make your uh, cotton or your finger circling here. Okay, like this in this way. All right. The last one is called Yingxiang here, okay, Yingxiang. So here, Yingxiang Xue here, Ying, here in, in Chinese, uh, the translation could be welcome. But when we welcome somebody, then when we may, you know, the first of thing when we welcome something is that we need to face somebody then we can welcome somebody, right? Such as we may have the uh, Chinese phrase as ying jie, huan ying. So this ying here, we need to face to somebody. When we, are, when we are back to somebody, then we cannot welcome somebody here. So the core meaning of ying is face to, okay? Face to face, face to something here, ying. And the uh, xiang here means to the uh, means the fragrance here, 
fragrance like the flowers or perfume. Okay. So, so here, yin xiang put them together means you are facing the fragrance. Okay. It means facing the fragrance. You can face the fragrance again. So when your nose is blocked, sometimes when you're caught cold and you've got the running nose, then you cannot breathe or you cannot smell anything here. In this kind of situation, then choose this acupoint. It could help. So the location of yin xiang here is that you may find a groove okay, between you know, on the face side. Okay, find this groove here between the nose and the lips here. So it's by the end of the groove, groove here. Yes, by the side of your nose here. Then you can press it by your fingers or your uh, use the cotton sticks here. Then you may feel the stimulation, actually it is very strong. And then when you press it harder, then you may, may, you may feel that actually the uh, actually your then uh, your your nose will you know the block of your nose will stroke immediately, and besides this, if you press it harder, then when the stimulation is getting stronger, then you may feel that your eyes is still watering. So you could also use this to help you to deal with the dry eyes syndrome as well. So we could use this method to do, uh, to use this acupuncture. And besides this, when it comes to uh, the block, uh, the block, the running nose here, then we could also use the mint cream. You could use the mint cream and uh, put it <coughs> around the acupoint. Then they, after a while, then it could, uh, and you know, uh, combined with the self massage way, then you could get the, uh, get it better, okay? So let's take a revision here. Then we, uh, I have, you know, explained the five uh, different acupoints today and through their uh, Chinese cultural background here. So uh, first two is related to the mind. One is called Shen Men, okay, the mind of the gate. And then Shen Ting is mean the upper side of the mind here and the Shen Men is here, okay? All of these two things uh, uh, have some good function to adjust the mind uh, disorders here. And then Jingming and the Cheng Xi, Jingming and Cheng Xi, these two things, uh, these two acupoints could have good function to maintain the eyes problem here. So you may see that Jingming here related to the uh, eyeball here. And Cheng Xi means to hold the tears here. Okay. And the last but not, not least, Yin Xiang Xu here. Yin Xiang, Yin Xiang means to face the fragrance here. So I think that is uh, so much for today. And then if you are interested in Chinese culture and then the uh, ch uh, Chinese medicine, then I could recommend this doctor, Dr. Xu Wenbing. Uh, I think he, he has very unique, uh, you know, way to explain some of the Chinese character and the Chinese um, medicine. I think his book is very interesting. And so much for this. And uh, thanks, everyone. <laughs> thanks. Uh, have a nice day. Okay. Thank you very much. Hope you like it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. And um, as we said, we've recorded the session and it will be available on our YouTube channel for others to, um, uh, to view also. Um, Many of our practicing acupuncturists um, in Ireland will will view these uh, uh, outside of their regular work day because they're seeing patients mm -hmm. at this time. So, um, any questions or comments from uh, the audience? Can I make one thing? Yeah, I'm being... uh, excellent, and uh, Doctor Yu, and uh, you're not a good, not only a good doctor, you are excellent uh, a lecturer. As a layman who knows nothing about acupuncture, and you taught me a lot in one uh, half an hour, and I really enjoyed your lecture. Okay, well okay, done. Thank you. And thank uh, you. by the way, we have uh, over thirty and uh, PhD students from Xiangya, but they mm -hmm. are, most of them are on West medicine and not on Chinese medicine. And yes. uh, we have more and the PhD students are supported by CSE studying here in Galway. And uh, mm -hmm. so we 
we have a great team and you are from and that's uh, Hunan and mm -hmm. uh, yeah so they are all from Changsha Xiangyang yeah exactly <laughs> so, so we, we have a lot and the in the future to okay, okay thanks i yeah. hope i can you know contact you with you to get some further study mm -hmm. with you in the future thanks a lot. and, and welcome you and uh, you're, you're welcome to visit and the galway and the, uh okay. but one, one thing on the and the, i know the time is getting short and the one thing i would like to ask you about is the mechanism of the acupuncture for mm -hmm. the mountain acupoint mm -hmm because it's right in the middle between bones, right? Mm -hmm. And my, mm -hmm. my wonder is, is it dialect? How, how deep the needle is required to stimulate it? Is it more uh, to do with the blood circulation or is it more to do with the dialect contact with the nerve? Uh, actually, we could, uh, we do it, you know, uh, through this way. The angle, when we uh, stick into the needles is important. Then we need to, you know, uh, light down the needles and then uh, through uh, following the bones, the shape of the bones and then put it the needles uh, into the acupoint. Actually, it depends uh, because you know there are different types of uh, acupoints. Uh, there are the, the acupuncturists, there are different types of it. Then uh, all of them maybe have their uh, unique opinion to the uh, depth of the uh, this needle method, then I, I am not sure the standard thing is, but from my personal experience, it could be deeper. Yeah, it's around, I think it's around 320, then it is okay, which means it's around this length, then it is okay. So uh, when we put the needles into it, then uh, according to my own experience, then uh, I, uh, the bleeding thing, maybe uh, it happens, but the nervous thing, I, I do not admit it before, then I think it's due to the way when you stick into the needles to the body, uh, whether you, I mean, whether you are soft enough or you are gentle enough, or sometimes, you know, when the, it also depends on the uh, top of the needles, whether it is sharp enough, all of these things, I think it counts here. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you. I, I, I'm not an acupuncture practitioner either, and um, so I'm, mm -hmm. but I might ask a question, might be a naive question, but I had always thought of acupuncture and the acupoints mm -hmm. as requiring needle insertion. Mm -hmm. um, from mm -hmm. your talk then, I might believe that pressure with a cotton swab or mm -hmm. uh, may also have therapeutic benefit. Mm -hmm. Oh, so uh, uh, I am not quite uh, uh, catch your question. Do you mean that if we could use the cotton sticks, then we have no need to use the needles, right? Well, I, think I, 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 I only knew of needling. I didn't realize that you could use oh, oh, okay, cotton okay. sticks. <laughs> it, it could also use the cotton sticks. I mean, that this one is more like the massage way. Yeah. Uh, the needles is called the acupuncture way, but all of these two treatments, uh, all of they based on the acupoints. Points, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, the connection that's, that's between acupoints, yeah. mirroring and the internal organs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay. Um, any other questions? And if not, then I will thank both of our speakers and. Um, uh, as I said, we record, we've recorded the presentations and be available for others to hear. Um, both very interesting and um, uh, I look forward to learning more about this as we, as we progress in our partnership through this um, global alliance of uh, um, Confucius Institutes of Chinese Medicine. So thank you all very much and um, let's wish you all um, a great day, peaceful day, happy day and most importantly maybe a healthy day so and future thank you all thank you thanks thank you thanks thank you mm -hmm.